So the idea behind the film was to ask those that uh, predicted the crash, the housing crash, ask them why it happened, ask them what's next, you know, what, what we can learn about the past so we're not making these same mistakes. The land of Arcadia. Hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics, still at the New Orleans Investment Conference. Really excited to have my next guest, next guest on here, Jimmy Morrison, a, an entrepreneurial filmmaker who has just produced, let's see if we can get it up there, a film called The Bubble that did a screening. You can see some of the names that he pulled on there to talk about the stock market bubble and the film he made about it. Now he's kind enough to join us. So Jimmy, uh, take it away and tell people about the film. I'm excited to see it already. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Uh, so the idea behind the film was to ask those that uh, predicted the crash, the housing crash, ask them why it happened, ask them what's next, you know, what, what we can learn about the past so we're not making these same mistakes. Because I had started a house painting business the month that house prices peaked. So I was blindsided by the bubble. And, uh, you know, I just thought there have to be people out there that predicted this that uh, can give us the tools we need. And so over time, I kind of found it's a little more complicated than that. And it's not as simple as just putting in the data points or whatever. But uh, it really is a great learning experience. And I think we've done something uh, really important with the film where people are able to show this to their friends and family and get them to understand Austrian economics and free market principles yep. and how it affects the economy and really why we're having these bubbles and uh, why they keep getting bigger and bigger. And uh, we're working on a sequel that we're editing called The Bigger Bubble that starts right. with the bailouts in 2008 and brings it up to today. So. <laughs> Yeah, and it's uh, it's incredible how it's just really been uh, doubling down of all these things. Um, so I'm curious, what was, after talking with all these folks, and what's your takeaway of what was, what did allow this to happen? Yeah, I think the root cause, you know, there, there are a lot of things like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and uh, housing and urban development, the CRA, like there, there are a lot of factors that came into play. Um, but the root cause and the thing that if this one thing was taken away, none of that stuff could have become what it was. Uh, the root cause was the Federal Reserve printing money. Yeah, money, I'm on board. <laughs> pushing down interest rates and, you know, telling what that does is it tells entrepreneurs and consumers, you know, the general public, uh, that there's more savings than there actually is. And so they think they're wealthier and that they can do these long-term projects that really the economy couldn't sustain. And so if the Federal Reserve hadn't been injecting all that money into the banks, um, you know, they wouldn't have been able to keep putting all this money into housing. You know, they wouldn't have been able to, to put it up as high as they did because interest rates would have eventually gone up. So amen to that. I think you laid it out beautifully how you can have mortgage or real estate prices mm -hmm. go up, but with a finite money supply, it means something else comes down yet. When exactly. the Fed comes along with their printing press, kind of skews everything. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And I think the film does a great job of you, you, using like pop culture references, South Park, uh, Daily Show, that sort of thing. So it's really something that even my explanation just now, like it was all right. But like the film does a really good job of making these things like really easy to understand. So it, it's nice for reaching people that you haven't nor right. uh, necessarily been able to reach with uh, just talking to them about these ideas. And I think that's something that is really valuable and needed, especially because, again, you know, there's the numbers and the data, which has its rightful place. But, you know, to the degree of trying to present it in a way that other people can understand, you know, making it engaging and breaking these things down, because not everyone's reading Austrian economics, yeah. but everyone is affected by the malinvestment, the misallocation of capital. It's like those uh, those little Muppet videos of, did you see what the Fed did? And the Ben <laughs> Bernank were great. Yeah. And it sounds like you've really taken a lot of these concepts, put them together to make a great way for people to be able to grasp what's going on. Yeah, that was the idea. It took us a lot longer than I hoped. We actually shot our first interviews in May of 2011. Uh, so I'm kind of embarrassing to say that, but uh, that's okay because, you know, if we had put the film out back in like 2014, 2015, uh, it would have been a much more academic. And so I'm really glad we spent the extra time, you know, making it easier to understand. And I, I completely agree because what better time than now where, 
you know, it's unfortunate, but we have the Fed, don't call it QE, but we're going to print more money yeah, than right. QE. And I think this is something that's really relevant to people to understand now because unfortunately part two is playing out yeah. yet. The good news is when you understand this stuff, you don't have to be standing on the train tracks when the thing comes through. Yeah. And I think people now, you know, a lot of people that aren't familiar with this stuff, they might think, oh, why do I need to know about the housing bubble? It, you know, it was 10 years ago. The economy is so different now. But when the economy crashed with the housing bubble, everybody looked back to the dot-com bubble to think like, okay, maybe we need to figure out what the hell's going on because this stuff didn't used to happen as extreme as it's been happening. And now, you know, we're just falling one bubble, uh, uh, we're falling one bubble up with another. So it's just, uh, it's obviously unsustainable. There's no way that they can get away with uh, what they've done. Uh, looking back at like 2008, uh, everybody heard about the TARP bailouts. It was $700 billion, you know, like Morgan Stanley, for example, uh, they had like $128 billion in losses in a couple weeks. TARP gave them like less than $20 billion or something I like hear that. Morgan was then, close to going under back yeah, then. Yeah, but what we found out years later, thanks to a Freedom of Information Act, the Federal Reserve was secretly loaning them over $100 billion during that period. So everybody's up in arms about $20 billion bailout from TARP when really the Fed is the monster behind the scenes that's really, uh, you know, manipulating the economy in favor of the banks. And it's not just U.S. banks. You know, they bailed out foreign banks without approval of Congress and that sort of thing. And that never happened before this crisis. Yeah, it's uh... – I know you got to run because you have a meeting with Walter yeah. Block, who tell him yes, I said Walter. hello. I've <laughs> admired his research for years. Um, although just uh, in wrapping up, what uh, can you tell people what the reception to the film has been like so far? I know you did yeah. a screening here the other night. Yeah, we had a great screening here uh, the other night. They had to add about 30 seats, which is always nice. And uh, we had a big screening at the Anthem Film Festival. You mean you added 30 seats because it was oversubscribed, right? Yes, yeah. yes not, not that 30 people showed up. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, we premiered, did our worldwide premiere at the Anthem Film Festival at Freedom Fest. We got an audience award. Uh, we actually had the highest attendance of any documentary in the history of the festival. Um, we didn't beat Atlas Shrug, but that's fiction, so I'm not going to count that. Um, yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, so th that went really well, and uh, we had a panel after with Doug Casey and, and Peter Schiff. Um, but then this summer, we did our New York City premiere, and that's when we released the film uh, digitally, and we have our Blu-rays and DVDs coming out. Um, but with the New York City premiere, we were, we were able to have Jim Grant and Tom Woods and Peter Schiff and Gene Epstein, David Tice, and mm -hmm. myself. And then Liz Clayman uh, from Fox Business actually moderated it. Oh, yeah. um, so we're, we're doing really well. We're excited to get the movie out. It's actually uh, been seen in over 40 countries already, which I'm really excited wow. about. Um, and uh, we've got screenings coming up next Friday at the University of Houston uh, with AIER and Young Americans for Liberty. Um, and then Saturday, the Mises Institute is putting on a symposium with Ron Paul, and they're actually buying copies of the film to give to everyone that attends the symposium. So if you guys are anywhere near Lake Jackson, hopefully I'll see you next Saturday. Well, it's, it's really impressive what you've done, Jimmy. Uh, just the list of partners you have, and it's, it's inspirational seeing someone take, again, situation that's not ideal, but you take in your, your energy and your ability, you've given something that, I mean, geez, if you stay out of the way of these bubbles, maybe that could be you retired 20 years earlier. Not that you have to speculate, right. but just the, that's the value of understanding these things. So I appreciate what you're doing. And perhaps just wrapping up, uh, let them know the website and where, because uh, they can buy the film online now. Yeah, that's right. Um, so thanks for having me on. I've really enjoyed our conversations the last few days. Um, it's thebubblefilms.com and you can get it digitally. Uh, we're going to be expanding to different digital platforms like Vimeo and iTunes and Google Play and stuff. Uh, but we're kind of rolling it out over time. Um, that way, you know, Amazon isn't taking 50% of every, every film we sell. But yep. um, yeah, we're really excited for people to see the movie. And uh, you can check it out, thebubblefilms.com. Shoot me an email, jimmy at lettucedisagree.com. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments on the film. And most importantly, rate it on IMDb because that's super important to me. <laughs> well, we'll we'll put all of that information in the description below and uh, actually have a meetup.com group where we do things in Denver and we will plan a screening there. Yeah, so I, folks can I hope come to, and 
I hope to make it out there sometime in the next few months. We'll do something. Cool. Well, I'll look forward to it. Jimmy, thanks so much and congratulations. Right. Uh, look forward to following up soon. Thanks. Let's talk again. The land.